Hello there, everyone. Good to see you all. Or hopefully you're listening to myself, Tom Shanklin, John Barkley. We have a special guest on tonight. But first of all, how are you two lads keeping? I'm good. Good, thanks, Steve. Don't need um, don't need don't need don't need Fine, perfect. Perfect, ready to go. Don't eat on this show. Don't eat on this show, John. Don't go on your phone on this show. You're on your phone then, Steve's introduction. It's a lack of respect, Eaton. I got, a, I got a nibble of dark chocolate there. That was it. Very oh. nice. Dark chocolate. Right. Cup, of tea, cup of tea or coffee? Is that as well? Cup of tea. Just finished Whiskey. dinner. Whiskey. <laughs> I'm scared to speak because my internet's bad. I'm scared. I have to be quiet on this one. That'd be perfect. We'd all appreciate that. Well, well, it's good to see you both again, lads. It's, it's been too long. Uh, it was a great weekend of rugby that we'll catch up on. But, uh, first of all, we've got a guest. Um, the new recruitment, our new group into Leinster, and that is, of course, Charlie. I'm not going to pronounce your surname because we've already had a dispute on here for about 10 or 15 <laughs> minutes. So, if you could clarify, Charlie, how you pronounce your surname, then it'll be good going forward for us. Uh, so it'd be Natai, Natai, yeah, Natai, yeah, okay, that's it. Nice one. So, how you keeping it? How you keeping it anyway? Things good. Settling into life in Dublin. Yeah, no, it's it's good. It's good. Really enjoying it. Um, apart from the the weather, uh, it's a, it's a bit different, but um, it, it's growing on me. Um, but so so far so good. Nice one. And I know we chatted just before we we, we came on live. Uh, we've brought family over. Um, getting settled just outside Leopard Town. Traveling out of training uh, to the central Dublin. Um, what's it been like sort of settling into the squad? Obviously, Leinster being one of the powerhouses in European rugby, and, you know, obviously it, it must be great for you to, to go to such a prestigious club. Yeah, it is, it is. Um, it's like like moving to any team, you sort of um, still still find your feet, I suppose, in the first few months, uh, learning the roles, the culture, um, the way the team runs. Um uh, the coaches, how they coach. So um, it's still fairly new to me. Um, still, still learning. Even though I feel like I'm old, um, so, <laughs> so I'm, st I'm, I'm still learning in, in that aspect. But um, so, so far the, the the team's been good. Coaches have been awesome. And just on the coaches, uh, somebody like Sean O'Brien, who's I played with, who's come in. There's obviously a bit of change in the coaching staff at the minute. Um, are you enjoying working with the the coaches there? And, and trying to get as much information out of them as possible before they, a couple of like Stuart Lancaster moves on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, just, just, yeah. Like, like I said, just, just understanding the way they they coach uh, and sort of taking as um, much as I can from from them, especially Stu, though um, that he's leaving um, at the end of the year. Um, sort of, he's he's been around a while, um, so try and try and pick up um, as much tips as I uh, as I can off him and yeah Sean, Sean's been awesome um, I guess he's new to coaching so um, he's he's still finding his feet but um, he's certainly um, handy to have around the club Charlie just you said a couple of times there you're getting used to the way they coach you obviously played in a few different countries as an outsider looking into Leinster I can only imagine that what they're doing is very different because They've had such a ridiculous period of sustained success. Is there anything you can put your finger on what they do that's particularly different based on your experiences in New Zealand and, and I'm guessing very different to what you saw in France? Um, probably the main one is the in terms of training um, and the, in the detail. So so everybody knowing their roles. Um, and then just the the training intensity is so, so fast and, and intense. Um, so... I guess that's the edge that they have on um, the teams that I've, I've been on previously. How, why did you leave France, Charlie? I mean, <laughs> the way I look at it, it does, you, most people will finish up in France, the sun, you touch on the weather, red wine, Lyon, <laughs> one of the, not the gastronomic capital of Europe. And you're, you're doing it the hard way. You're now, you're now in you know, the midst of, you know, I've heard stories from Sean O'Brien, a few other guys around the intensity of that Leinster training at this stage of your career. Was it purely just to look at the success and an opportunity that you just couldn't turn down? Um, yeah, you could say that. Um, just just the way the team runs, um, 
and, and been so successful over the years and you, you sort of want to be a part of that. Um, and more so for my family, my kids, um, they, when we first moved to France, they were, they were young. So um, for them to, they were schooled in, in French. So to, to bring them over to an English school um, and sort of give them an opportunity to, to learn English um, was, was a sort of major pull. Um, but also have trying to be successful, trying to win another um, championship with the team. Just speaking of that success as well, Charlie, obviously last year was probably, for a lot of clubs, that would have been deemed a good year. You know, runners-up in the final of Europe, semi-finalists of the league comp. I'm sure Lens could do that as a, as a failure probably that year. What I'm just kind of wondering, what did you walk into in terms of the environment? Obviously, you came in in pre-season just off the back of that. Um, I guess they the the hungry for another another star. They as they, they talk about it, um, but they they're a team that just wants to win, um, and that that's what I admire admire so much about them is a team that wants to win everything. Uh, and I've been in teams in the past that um, you, you're happy just to get a win um, at times, um, but this this team wants to wants to win so. Uh, to be part of that, that's that's pretty special, and um, just just learning from that. Right, Thanks. Have you got a question for Charlie? Can you hear me all right now? I've had some massive issues with him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can hear you perfect. Three kids, like just streaming, playing games. It's a nightmare. I'm going to go absolutely, me- I'm going to go absolutely mental after this. You don't want to see me mental. Um, how big of a, how much of a, a pull was it? To, we probably touched upon this to, to come to Lens, obviously because it's it's a big club in the history and the chance of winning silverware, but also to to travel around some of the the cities you get to go to. You get to Italy, um, <coughs> Cardiff, not so much Scotland, but oh. if you're lucky, you'll have a, an all right night, a five out of ten. Probably people, people from Wales saying that Wales is the capital of the earth. I think. Have you been there, Charlie? You're quite quickly. Wales, I've, I've, I've been there once. Yeah, that was enough. Been there once. Yeah, <laughs> but but I mean, it, how much of a, a pull was that for you to come into this league, come into the URC because you get to travel all over Europe, really? Yeah, it, yeah, so it's, yeah, it, it, it's that's another one as well. Um, to experience another competition, um. Played in Super Rugby now. Played in in the uh, uh, French um, top fourteen now to experience the URC. So um, that that's pretty special. Um, and obviously, yeah, the the travel plays a plays a part in that. Um, yeah. So and it's un- like obviously, and then it's learning another culture. So obviously, the French have their culture. New Zealand will have their culture, but then. The, learning the Irish culture as well, the the people understanding the people, um, and and sort of yeah, learn, learning from there, I suppose. Is there any players that you've when you since you joined Leinster that one you thought, oh, I, I like him, and or you thought, oh, I might I might stay away. You're a bit too crazy. <laughs> uh, no, they're generally pretty good. I've I've found. Um, I, I tend to hang with the. Sort of younger players because they they make me feel a bit younger, um, but yeah. But as 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 a new player in the team, you sort of you sort of at the back still still learning, um, sort of taking everything in. So um, you sort of don't want to put yourself out there too early. Um, but now generally generally the teams the team's been uh, pretty welcoming um, to me. Charlie, have you been invited to Johnny Sexton's wine cellar? <laughs> I've been, I've been, I've been there a couple of times um, so far. But, um, that's impressive. So, um, no, it's, it's good. It's good. <laughs> it's just on um, somebody who's in training this week. I know anybody watching uh, the pod tonight will be wanting to know about Kieran Reid. He popped along the train, and obviously, you probably know him a little bit from back home. Did you get a good chat with him? Uh, not really. Actually, I flew so. <laughs> I flew back to New I flew back to New Zealand um last week uh for a wedding. So okay. I only arrived uh was yesterday. So um I sort of missed missed that aspect. But in terms of no doubt the, the team and 
and that would have um, sort of pulled pulled as much info as they they could from him. But I know a few of the lads, um, the Kiwi lads, especially down the Crusaders, they caught up with him. So no doubt they would have had a good chat. Is he yeah. India's coaching? Charlie, is he India's coaching? Would he like to get into coaching at a, at a high level, do you reckon, in, in his career? Um, not too sure. Not too sure at this stage. Um, but definitely... He's just, he's just tidying up on all the corporate gigs, making a load of cash. <clears throat> yeah, that's it. That's it, travelling. And I suppose as... Um, well, yeah, later on, no, no doubt, I guess, he's sort of floating around a few teams, even could be just uh, picking up a few tips as well. So... Um, no, no doubt it'd be, be on his mind later on. Nice one. Charlie, we're not going to keep you any longer, um, but before we let you go, um, have you been to Copperface Jacks yet? Not yet. Not yet. Definitely. Have you been to Crystal? Crystal, Crystal. Probably, I, mean, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't remember. <laughs> well, we'll, we'll, we'll get you on again at the end of the season, and you better have been to both. And experience yeah. a good night out in Dublin. But thanks very much for coming on. I appreciate it. Best luck for the rest of the season. Um, and hopefully, you get a couple of runs uh, over the next few weeks. Um, so, best luck. Cheers. Sweet. Cheers, lads. Thank you. Nice well, lads. Um, nice fella. He seems a bit jet lagged. Not surprised. Shooting back to New Zealand for a wedding and coming back. Messes with you, doesn't it? He, I can't wait to see him. What he put, I can't wait to see him have a run of games because he's a unit. Yeah. Like. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't watch much of him in France. You probably, did. You watch him a bit for for Leon Shanks. I've seen highlights. Yeah. Yeah. Just quality. Exactly what he looks like. You know, he's he's big. He's strong. He's dynamic. Good hands. So, sort of describe myself. It's like looking in the mirror. Yeah, I know what you mean. Um, well, he was missing at the weekend for Leinster versus uh, Monster. Um, instead of me talking about Leinster and Monster for for a change, lads, you probably watched the match or, or watched significant parts of the game. Um, John, start with you. Just just on Leinster, obviously, lots of mistakes in the first half, and and just your thoughts on the game. Yeah, I I watched it back, and. I don't know why. I just, I, you know, it was quite tight after thirty minutes, but pretty much from minute one to the end, Leinster were in second, third gear. Munster, I felt like were like all hands on deck, digging in, scrapping. You could see the quality difference on paper, and as the game started and got going, I did kind of think that in the first sort of twenty minutes, Leinster had a lot of possession, and they look. Don't get me wrong, they look so organised. Everyone knows what they're doing. Charlie talking there about just the difference in training, the attention to detail is like nothing he'd seen before. But they weren't really making dents. And, and it kind of reminds me of some of those games where they lost against the Bulls and against uh, La Rochelle. But yeah, I mean, Leinster are missing a handful of top quality guys still. You know, James Lowe, Larmer didn't play. Gibson Park didn't play, who makes a massive difference. Uh, who else didn't play? Jack Conan came off the bench. Sexton played class, I thought, you know, he still he seems to be making more smart decisions, probably what to do with his body in games, if that makes sense. He's not he's not getting the stuff he doesn't need to get involved anymore. And you can't blame him if he's got an eye in the World Cup. I thought he was class the way he runs the game. So yeah, no, no big surprise to me there, Stevie. They were uh, a, a class apart from Munster for me. What about you, Stevie? Yeah. What do you make of him? Yeah, like in the opening 20 minutes, I think Lancer butchered like three or four really good opportunities. Like knock over, knock on from um, Dan Sheehan, the the Keane Healy pass. I think it was Osborne that ran the short line. He then knocked it on. There was a ball like the back to Sexton, and all Sexton had to do was take it and give it. And they were walking in, and then Sexton knocks it on. Johnny missed a, a set of three points in front of the posts, and it just felt like they were. They couldn't get going. And in studio, we were kind of talking about when Leinster made a mistake, like it seemed to be like much more, uh, like they seemed to get really frustrated and down on themselves because in the change rooms, they probably all knew that they should beat that monster side. But when it didn't really click in the first, especially in the first half, then you just get more and more frustrated and then more errors creep in. But 
And I thought there was a really good performance by Luke McGrath, the scrum half, who's slipped mm. out of the Irish ranks. Um, really scored strong, a nice try he? here. Yeah. yeah, yeah, like it's strong, but that's, you know, Dave Kilcoyne and, you know, Healy, Ben Healy, they've, they've both got to do better there. Yeah. Uh, that's exactly like what you train for, isn't it? You know, that's why you do all the power through your legs, you know, to slip through a tackle and just have that leg drive to, to go forward. You know, that's, that's why power weights are so important in, in rugby. You know, it doesn't always happen. Sometimes you hit a chest and you go back, but when you slip through, like he did there, pump those legs. Yeah, I, <coughs> I agree. If I, if you're five metres out from your line, you've got a scrum half run it, running over a loose head prop and a 10. It, it doesn't scream to me, you know, we're, we're in the trenches here. We're, you know, we understand what's on the line here. I just think it was a bit soft and it kind of sums up a lot of what we've seen from Munster this year so far. And Munster were still in the game at that stage, but something that was their Achilles heel was their discipline. Two yellow cards in the game. Keenan Knox um, was the first one. We'll just see it here. That's, you know, that's just clumsy. I don't think there's much intent for him to, you know, make contact with the head, but you can see James Ryan on the ground. You know, I think he actually throws a, a half-hearted dig at him um, mm. when, when he's there. And then this is the other one. I don't know what you think, Shanks, you know, with the chip kick there. Is he already in the air? Is he unlucky? Is it a red card? What's your thoughts? I don't think it's a red card. Um, Could have hammered his knee there, couldn't he? That's why I kept thinking. He's, mm. He has gone for the ball. You know, but it, it's just timed it wrong. Um, it's sort of, it's probably good in a way that it's carded because it will stop people doing it. But Joe, you know it didn't from from a wide angle. It didn't look overly bad. He's gone for a charge down, and he's just left it a bit too late. Basically, he's got his timing wrong. So just like when you're going for a ball in the air, get your timing wrong, you're going to get carded. Yeah, I think I think Andrew Brace is pretty good. The referee, I think he's probably one of the best referees in the game. Made a couple of decisions during the, the match. Got a bit of information from the TMO and then just went with it. And I think generally he made the right calls, um, which is what we want to see more of. Like, do you know? Do you know what, what you want to say, John? I was going to say in the game, and it's something I thought was really interesting because we sort of moan about things getting missed. And I don't know if you know it's Andrew Brace. He talked, to, it was like a maybe a knock on, maybe not. And he spoke to the touch judges as play was going on. And he says, Have you seen anything there? And then he's obviously heard back, Yeah, there's a knock on. And his reply, which you hear on camera, is that we'll call it then. So he's like, yeah, Even yeah. he's not getting he, someone's seen that and just ignored it and thought someone else will see that, which yeah. I thought it was so enlightening for why we see things getting missed. And he's got, you know, the ref's got 101 things to do. The speed of the game, we always talk about for players. But for the referee as well, he's looking at so many things and they've got their focus areas and they need more from the assistants. Mm. Should be. Yeah, need more of that. It should be. Need more of that. I thought he was pretty good. Want to slow the game down um, and waste time hmm. finding a knock-on in replay. He was good, though. He kept everything, like you said, he kept things moving. He didn't, uh, he didn't uh, those two yellow cards, you could see some refs spend five minutes on that. And I think he got the yeah. right. 20 seconds, got to the screen, right, that's the decision, let's go, let's move on. Didn't deliberate, and that's what you want to say. And I think maybe whether he's had a directive on the water breaks are slow and played now and we need to speed the rest of this up. But I thought, I, thought, yeah. I actually didn't think he was really good when I watched the game. No, definitely. Uh, I know we'll move on to a, a crazy game, Shanks last with the, the Dragons beating the Ospreys, but because I thought the referee was pretty good in that game as well, letting the flow. But just on the Connacht Scarlet game, mm. um, just from a Welsh point of view, Shanks, really difficult night once again for the Scarlets. Yeah, it was. Didn't help with the start they had. We talk about, don't you, starting big. Got to start big. Don't give many chances. Stay in the game. And, you know, it's... What's the sheriff look doing? At the, look at the time there. <laughs> That's, that is like the worst possible thing that can happen. Imagine being in the coach's box and you see that and you're thinking, oh, it's going to be one of those days. It wasn't quite one of those days all the way through. Um, the weather was pretty horrific, uh, as we've seen yeah. for a few of the games. Um, and the Scarlet's got themselves back into it. Johnny McNichol um, sets up a lovely try. Um, looked pretty decent at some stages at uh, fullback. Like, He's really good attacking, but I still think 
he has that indecisiveness in him where he doesn't know when to kick, doesn't know when to run, and then gets himself caught. That's just that's beautiful for Steph Evans. You know, he's done everything right there. Um, Jack Carty running back here is, is funny. He just like gives up. There's a real <laughs> like, he's on the QE2. He's like the QE2 turn there. He just turns the wrong way, ends up looking like a pirouette. Uh, <laughs> But they get themselves back into it, the Scarlets. But there's just instances in the game that you think, ah, oh, like it's either poor game management or it's it's discipline. They have another two yellow cards, and that just sort of sums up where they are at the moment. You're going to give yellow cards away when you're just severely under pressure. Now, some of the yellow cards have been an attack. You look at Fafita, um, Costello in a ruck, but. A lot of their cards are from just defending for long, long periods. And when you do that, when you're on your line for five, ten minutes, it's hard not to offend and you are going to give penalties away. And then those penalties often lead to yellow cards. I think Reese Patchell's kick, I think it was 67 minutes, was a big miss because that gives Scarlets a little bit of hope, puts them within seven, so it puts them within a score. And then towards the end, the game just got completely away from them. A um, little bit worrying. Lads losing Lee Halfpenny right before the game. You know, it's, hoping it's precautionary, but you never know. You know, he's, there was a bit of re rejigging around the back line, which wouldn't have helped. But also, in terms of the Autumn Nation series coming up, he's going to be a huge loss. So I hope he's all right. But. It's a horrible start for the Scarlets. There's no doubt about that. They have Leinster at home and then they're away in South Africa. And it could be after this, it could be one win from one, one win, one draw from nine games. Yeah, I just, we spoke about, we spoke about it in the, I don't remember what game it was where we had saw Callum Afoni going for an intercept. He got a yellow card. And the next week we saw someone else, Lousy going for an intercept, yellow card. For yeah. me, whenever you see people going for intercepts in defence, off the cuff, in the midfield, especially when you see forwards doing it, you've got no confidence in your defence. They, they attack well. You know, it's no surprise we're talking about last week. Scott Williams looked sharp. I think he was... Pulled the lap, John. He's out. He's out now, which is a nightmare yeah. for him. It is a nightmare. Out. They've missed Johnny Williams. They don't have... Yeah. yeah. Have, you ever, have you boys ever pulled a lap? What's the worst thing you ever... Don't have a lap. How do you know a lap? <laughs> How do you hear a laugh? I don't know, mate. He's, he's a good name, Scotty. I know he's got back pro He had back issues for a while. I don't know, mate. But I just, yeah, I look at the way they defend and I just think they changed their defence coach twice in two years and it doesn't look like there's much edge about how they how they defend. Yeah, we've got, it's almost the scarlets of maybe kind of eight, nine years ago where they the focus was purely attack. That's when I first went to Sky, that's all it was. It was all attack, no focus on defence, and they're all over the shop in defence, I think. Yeah, they're all they're all over the shop, and it's not going to get any easier for them. We talked last week about them having a, a bit of a tough run, um, but I actually have a little bit of sympathy for, for Peely. I think just the squad of players, the injuries that he has, the two seconds, two first-choice second rows are, are banned. Um you know they're getting lads in from Bristol on a three-week loan deal. Like it's, mm. it just seems the squad's a little bit all over the place. So hopefully they can bounce back. But a team that's bounced back again, two wins in a row. Shanks, Cardiff. I don't think any of us tipped. Well, maybe you did last week, Shanks. Did you tip them to beat the Stormers? Shanks, no, I, I, only I, if it was sunny, he said. Yeah, only if it was sunny. I, I thought the power from the Stormers in the wet would be too much for them. But yeah, roles reversed. Like, honestly, it was such a great atmosphere down there. And it was as well at the Dragons, probably even better at the Dragons, you know. So I'm not just trying to be biased towards Cardiff, but it was great. You know, they, they were in the fight all the way. And the amount of there was three tries the Stormers scored from driving lineouts. And the first one you scored, they scored was so easy. They end up like sprinting over the line. And you're thinking, ah, oh, here we go. This is, this is this is a nightmare because in these conditions, right? It's quite easy to give penalties away because it it was really bad. So any penalties in your half, the Manny Lebox just going to kick to touch, 
and he did that and they outscored Cardiff which you don't often see I believe I, I haven't got my phone on me because I'm watching it on my phone at the moment because my wi is bad but <laughs> but th- this would be worrying for Cardiff the, the ease that. they went over like th- that is just there's no defence really put up there, is there? They just walk it over yeah. far too easily. But the massive difference again, we said it for um, the Munster game, said it for the um, Lions, not the Lions game, the, the Dragons game, was just the breakdown. They were brilliant in the breakdown again. You know, so Josh Turnbull, Thomas Young, um, Dylan Lewis, all great, all great at turning ball over, slowing ball down. I think there's 14 turnovers to three. Not all of them were, were jackals, but that is what kept them in the game. Um, and some some great kicks from Reese Priestland. Boys, he was, it was a masterclass from Priestland. Like someone that we didn't even think would be in the Welsh squad, really. But, it's, you know, he's played mostly 15 this season. But watch this kick here. This is this is from a, a turnover ball, from a box kick up in the air. He's just seen the space. Now, he's not kicked that for it to bounce back and hold for Theo Cabango to score. But he's hit space. And this kid on the wing, on the left wing, he's got so much pace. Like, you might chase that 15 times and never get a bounce like that. It's like come bounce off the post. But he's done it and it's come in. This one here, they just seen space. Hartzenberg was was shooting out the line. He wanted to take last man, which is fine if your winger does that, as long as you've got the 15 coming around quick enough. And it wasn't. Identified the space, really good call, great kick. Jason Harris is a big man. You, you, it's a good tackle to stop him from there. You can stop him, but it has to be a great tackle. And he goes over. But real good fighting spirit from Cardiff and it was a it was a great atmosphere after so they deserved the win well it was good i think the stormers as well obviously getting the draw against the ospreys they picked up they got four tries in this game obviously picked up another two points i don't think it's the end of the world for them they're going to get home um you know better weather play you know the brand of rugby that they want to play get their big hitters into the match into the, the their common matches um, so, yeah, it's not bad from the Stormers. Uh, we'll move on to the next game, lads. Benetton versus the Bulls. I don't know, Benetton, like, we were all sort of getting a bit, you know, giddy at the start of the season about Benetton. And then, yeah. as time goes on, the same thing seems to be occurring, that they just fall away. And when the going gets tough, they seem to, to drop off a little bit. Long season, isn't it? Like, you see that. Start well, a few good games, some nice wins, but yeah, that's always the probably the criticism of them is that they they go away for bits. Probably the Bulls have had a bit to prove over there, given they lost in the Rainbow Cup there, didn't they? They knew kind of probably what to expect, um, so they wouldn't take them as lightly. They they've not gone as well as they would have liked the Bulls either on their trip over here. So you'd imagine they would have potentially targeted that and said, "Look, we have to go home with something more than we've come with on this trip so far." So. Um, but yeah, it was closer than the scoreline probably says, but uh, yeah, Bill's impressive. Benetton, better half, off. they were good, they were just, yeah, they were, yeah, they better just, revenge they were as well, well from the, the Rainbow Cup, you know, the, the humiliation, embarrassment that really was like when Benetton took them to town. Like, so, um, no, it's much better from the Bills considering what we watched the previous week against Monster. Um, we're going to go with Zebra versus Edinburgh. John, pick us up in Edinburgh. I thought Zebra might have stolen the win here. <laughs> Come on, Steve. <laughs> keep, keep it semi serious. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yeah, Zebra, to be fair, they'll win the odd game there, but I think Edinburgh picked a strong enough team. Uh, like they rotated a few guys in. The young guys played well, and they still had enough experience, enough guys in there. Uh, like some Bill Matt. I think when you go away from home and you play there, sometimes you lose a bit of energy from your players. And actually, you need guys that, in my experience, they go over there and just want just want the ball. Uh, they got off to a pretty good start, scored a couple of nice tries, um, and that's always nice when you play over there. Uh, you know, not much of an atmosphere in terms of crowd, so the game was pretty well dusted and done by um, halftime. And then 
that that was it. But some nice nice tries in there actually. Some nice some nice touches. Adam McBurney scored scored two, but yeah, a nice comfortable win and oh, that's fair. <laughs> Zebra came back though. You know, I thought I thought Edinburgh were gonna absolutely pump them after that. Yeah. Yeah. But to be fair, they came back and they they made it harder for Edinburgh. Edinburgh were never in doubt losing that game. No. But I think they were comfortable with that and they didn't really try and put Zebra to bed. You know, they didn't really try and put a nail in the coffin to try and think of another term I can use. Um <laughs> but I was they, they they just sort of cruised through that really after the first half at Edinburgh. Um it was it was always gonna be a win. It was an easy win in the end, but to be fair to Zebra, they came back and scored a couple of tries. Yeah. With the man down. Thanks. Let's turn our attention to the game of the weekend. I flicked it on. I was like, fuck, I'll give it a wee watch. And then all of a sudden, I'm engrossed. Like, what a bloody game. Dragons versus the Ospreys. It was incredible. It was my, it was my job to colour it for you, wasn't it, the game? My voice. So, so I don't take that as a compliment. Take that as a compliment. Um, mate, like... I thought at the start of the game it was a really good atmosphere. There are a lot, there are a lot of people. I think it's their biggest crowd so far, as, as you think, as you know, it would be for a derby, you know, because of the away support. But the pyrotechnics were out, the fireworks were out, the, the fire was up in the air, boiling <laughs> hot. Um, got really close to it when they're practicing, they, just before in rehearsals. They put the fire thing on. Oh my god, it was like right next to us. It was so hot. Um, <laughs> But great, great game right from the start. The weather held out, so it was really good conditions. And Ospreys got off to a dream start. Um, George North shooting down the right-hand side. It, it was good play from the Ospreys. They hit into the midfield. It's really slow ball. And then Jack Walsh, who I thought had a good game, um, flashes back. And a nice bit of hands, nice bit of link play, and, and George North goes over in the corner, and you're thinking, "Oh, you know, this is this could be the Ospreys' day. You know, this could be quite bad for the Dragons." But fought themselves right back into it. Looked really good off set piece, the Dragons. Partly, I think this is down to Jordan Williams, who's a really good player, a really attacking player. Pulls out last minute, which means Sam Davis has to come in to 15. So you've got Sam Davis. But he actually ended up moving to 10. Jesse Hanrahan went to 15. But you've got two ball players then in that back line. So you've got players that can manipulate defenders. So this was a really good set piece move. If, little things like that. You see just Sam Davis holding the ball a little bit later and just putting Steph Hughes, who had a good game as well in, in the centre, through a hole. And eventually then Ross um, Aaron Wainwright goes through. But... The link between Hanrahan and Sam Davis is really, really good. And something I think the Dragons have been lacking is, is having a ball player around that 15 or, or centre area. They've got Angus O'Brien, but he doesn't hold the ball up and he doesn't put players through holes like Sam Davis did. So that was a massive plus for me from the Dragons. The back row. Did you watch it, boys? The, like, the, what did you make of the back row? Yeah, of yeah no, I thought, obviously... Royalty? Moriarty was left. I didn't actually realise he was left out of the Welsh squad. Yeah. And then afterwards, um, again, um, the hooker, whose name's just left me there, who's now even brought Bradley in, Bradley Roberts. Roberts like, well, he yeah. had an so unbelievable good. game. And he's and he's, he's a really good thrower, really good thrower as well. Um, yeah, back row was good. And then Wainwright. I didn't actually re realise Wainwright was so well-spoken. Where Where's he from originally? So you can't be well spoken if you're from Wales. Fair. <laughs> well, he, he, he interviews very well. Is what I'm trying to say. Um, yeah, I thought I thought the back rows were were class, but somebody whose name you could not stop saying, Shanks Rio Dyer. What a performance by him! He has some serious wheels. Right, he was really good. This was this is where I'm, this is what I'm on about, like the interlink play there of. That's three really good quality passes off the left. The last one from Jack Dixon, who's not renowned for finish. passing. But the ball was in front, didn't check anyone. They're all organised. This is something we haven't seen from the Dragons. Too I was going to say, nine times that's out of ten, that, that, that ball wouldn't have got there. Yeah, 
died died the really big one. And this was this was the, this was the big one. Nicky Smith oh, tries Smith. to throw an intercept. Real so dire. He's gone completely. But important thing about this was the Dragons were down to thirteen men because they under a lot of pressure from the Ospreys. And the, the difference yeah. being is the Ospreys were down to thirteen men. and The Dragons punished him. Now the big turning point for this was Jack Walsh misses a kick to touch. It's about yeah, 10 oh, metres out. Oh, criminal, thanks. Criminal. 10 metres out in the middle of the field. 10 metres out from the, the Dragons line and he misses touch. And Daz got try written all over it. And then all of a sudden then, momentum has swung completely and the Dragons are defending for on the back foot. But he misses that kick. The ball has dropped out. Um, drop out 22. Max Nagy runs it back, forms a ruck, and then Nicky Smith throws that pass and, and Rio dies gone. But it's no coincidence he's been called into the Welsh squad and he has a game like that. He, it's sort of, I wonder whether now they'll throw him in the deep end against New Zealand after a performance like that. So I'm not sure. Do you think, is that their first game? Yep. First game ends up. Yeah, New Zealand are quite weak at the moment, though, and a lot of self doubt. Rubbish. Rubbish, yeah. Well, a, a, few lads that are probably, a few lads that are probably weak are Glasgow and Ulster after um, getting a sickness and a bug and yeah. not being able to play the games. Uh, Lions versus Glasgow, Sharks versus Ulster, two games that we were all looking forward to. To seeing from social media, Ulster got back yesterday. Um, so I was just intrigued to see when they would actually fly back. Obviously, they're a big game against Munster this weekend. And I know you say that I fancy them every week to win, John, but I actually do this week. Uh, I'm not sure what your thoughts are on that. I'll get a prediction. I'll get a so prediction you, shortly. You fancy him this week, yeah? You fancy him this week, yeah? Just to clarify. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Number one fan, of course, but um, John, just quickly on Glasgow, um, them being away, getting sickness, have you been speaking to Ram Wilson or any of the lads of, of, of how they got on and uh, are they back home yet? They got home yesterday as well, so they, they've, the had... Incident. <laughs> <laughs> they've, they've had a oh, nightmare, I, I messaged him, and I messaged I the, the, the masseuse is a friend. I said, oh, how's the trip been? He says, and this masseuse has been there for like 25 years. Worst trip he's ever been on. He said, just... Oh, no. Everyone's sick, vomiting, oh. diarrhea, just agony, apparently. Have you ever had that? Do you know where they picked it up from? I don't know, man. I, I remember being in Fiji once, and you you like, you just know. Every, I've been twice, and every time, you know, the Welsh boys went there a few years ago, and you just get sick. And I remember getting yeah. it on the flight home. The flight home from Fiji, thirty hours strapped to the toilet. For 30 hours. <laughs> we um we played the Tucuman <laughs> once against Argentina. Oh, and yeah, that's farm the country. Food, yeah, apparently the food like it was renowned for being bad, and we shouldn't eat it. And they came out serving soup, and it was thumb soup because they were carrying the dishes, and their thumb oh. were in the, in the soup when they carried it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the nutritionist came round and just said. No soup. No one eat the soup. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! I, I remember yeah, I um, Fiji another time. I lost seven kilos and had to play against Fiji in the boiling heat. I remember we played Fiji and I'd I'd just been strapped to the bog for four days. Andy Robert, yeah, Andy yeah. Robinson asked me if I could play, and I had my wedding in the summer. I need the match bonus. So I said yes. <laughs> I could. Yeah, I had food yeah. poisoning mate. once, and it was horrific. Oh, like me. Agony to so those boys. Yeah, that'd be a hell of a trip. I think. I don't know what's going to happen yeah. like, because you might not be able to rearrange those fixtures if you look at the the calendar. And you you want to know now, wouldn't you, whether you've lost the game and been not dock points, but you don't receive any points or not? Because but, but how, how would that work? Thanks. How would that work? Like, whose fault is it that they got sick? Like, it's you know, it's it's, it's, it's one it's of those it's, things that it, yeah, it's just one of those things. So. Should well, the points be split evenly to a, a piece, or no? I don't think so. I think, I think personally, if you, if you can't feel the team um, because of it, illness sickness or, or sickness, yeah. then that's it's no one's fault. But it's certainly not the opposition's fault who can feel the team. So I think, unfortunately, just the way it being, lions, to... lions and sharks, five points then. Yep. 
you'd have to say so. Not yeah. five, four. Four points. Not max one. Bonus point. Okay. Mm. What are they doing? COVID? Was yeah. it during COVID? Was it yeah. not five points? It was maximum. It was yeah. maximum. Yeah, it was, it was five points yeah. during COVID. Yeah. So unfortunately, I, I well, we'll see. We'll, we'll see how that pans out. We'll, we'll see how that pans out. Um, lads, any rants this week? We'll keep keep it brief. We're running out of time, so um, people who wear that's... lilac or purple shirts need to be <laughs> styled by someone. Need to get themselves down to a superstore. Yeah. A clothing oh, outfit you do, somewhere. You do realise that that wasn't my shirt. So we all pissed up the studio. Yeah. True, we all pissed up the studio. We're all wearing navy. And I was asked, oh, you should change. Frano's shirts are down there. So the other two lads, they weren't obviously big enough um, to wear the shirts. So I slipped into a racing wow. pink number, which, by the way, absolutely stank after about half an hour so uh neil francis get the old deodorant out for the shirts if you're leaving them behind in premier sports thank you very much um any other ones john have you anything uh i touched it earlier just touch judges not been not been brave enough to make calls you know help the refs out it, well, it never came to anything but it just sums up why we're seeing uh, missed uh, decisions or things that you know we're, we're wasting time going back because they've been seen but it obviously must happen a lot based on the tone of Andrew Brace's voice he's frustrated that they're not prepared to call things to him uh, not really yeah, I've, on your own I've, I've got one from today because I don't I don't know if I told you but I go to the gym and I'm so tired of putting people's weights away you yeah, know like good. You've done your work. You've, you've done your machine. Take the weights off. Put them back. Don't let someone else take. I, I don't actually have to take them off. I've got to add to them mostly, but it's still annoying. It's like if you throw darts, you collect them. It's you all about respect. Them. You wipe your own bum. Safe. Or you, Safe or use the B day. Use the B day. Yeah, that's exactly. I knew you would have one. You'd have to have go on. <laughs> I do, and I wish we did have one. Don't take public Thanks. transport. You are. You are looking big, Shanks. You, you must be doing a few sh shoulder shrugs. Um, Judy Dench, mate. Dench. A lot of Judy Dench. A lot of Judy Dench. What's your max now, Shanks? Are you over 100 yet? How much do you weigh? 100 kgs. A couple of you, mate. I'll do a couple of you, no problem. You 100 kgs, do you? 100 kg shoulder press. Oh, I thought you meant you weighed 100 kgs. I was like, your legs must Man, be... I'm not... John, I'm not far off of it. You must 104, have... 104 kgs out of that. A couple of nine irons poking out your shorts, it must be. Don't That's tell you I weighed it. myself at Cardiff the other day. But I had full kit on. How much? Well, bear in mind, I had like a, a coat and jeans. and Yeah, but okay, just... Yeah, 110? 100, yeah. <laughs> Mate, you're looking big when I saw you in uh <laughs> oh. <laughs> good weight though, yeah. Good weight. Yeah, yeah, good weight, mate. Yeah. Good weight, good, good weight. True. For any of the older viewers, that's 17 stone, four pounds. Tom Shanklin needs oh. to get back in the gym. Presenter's choice. Uh this week, Jess. Let's money. see what we have. Dream guest on the show, best away atmosphere in the league. A uh, little known fact about each of you. Um, well, the league's getting a lot of plaudits at the minute, lads, uh, because of attendances being up. So, Shanks, you said at the weekend the Dragons was good. Anywhere else in the league that you've been to this season or last season that have, that's been a really good atmosphere? Mm. Well, that's a good... Cardiff as well. Good good pretty atmosphere. Good. Normally for a good atmosphere, you need a good game, don't you? There's no point, like... I'd, I'd, a lot of the away games Wales have been a lot of the Welsh teams have been pretty terrible at so it's a good atmosphere for the home team but you want drama don't you in a game for it to be atmosphere um so no <laughs> <laughs> okay tell us an unknown fact about yourself then I'm. I used to be well, in the squad the best table tennis player. You used to be I was, ranked, I was ranked number one. Tom, what did you weigh when you played rugby? 
Stephen, I weighed between 97 and probably 99 kilograms. Well done. JB, first out of the league these days. No, no, we I don't need the facts about you. I need the facts about you too. I've just like pulled my. You've laid, you've laid yourself bare. Yeah, I'm naked right now. I used to I used to play at about 103 kilos apart from in Japan when I got dropped and I got I managed to get up to 111 kilos in Japan. <laughs> um but now I'm at about, about about 105 now 104. Never yeah. been under 100 since I stopped playing. No, me too. I was 110 to 115 when I played. And I'm sitting at 104 now. Since I had a kid, like I've been 110 since the day I retired, and then I had a kid 15 months ago, and it's just went. No time. So to eat. yeah, time. Give me no a fact. Time to eat. Give me a fact. Come fact. A mm. Um, Irish record holder at the Java. There you go. Um, a little known fact about me. Um, don't know where to go with this. I can eat a little creme bank. brulee. You know, like little creme brulees, like a little yogurt. You put it on a plate like that. I can eat them in one go like that. Go on. <laughs> John, you're struggling here. Come on, give us something. Um, I've done a yard of ale before. You got three nipples. Isn't that interesting. Oh, scaramanga. Yeah, scaramanga. Yeah. Let's have a look. <laughs> It'll do. Anyway, back to the rugby lads. We'll burn through these. Um, Lions versus Stormers this weekend. Uh, JB, who you fancy for this one? Lions. Shanks. Yeah, Lions. Yeah, Monster Ulster. Um, I'm going to go for Ulster. Of course I am. I just think uh, Monster is still struggling for form, struggling with loads of players. Are the Irish internationals going to play? Probably not. Um, so, yeah, it's going to be another depleted monster squad. So, Ulster, reasonably strong. A few of the emerging Ireland lads back. What do you boys think? Same, Ulster? Yeah, I think so, mate. I'm, I'm unconvinced still about Munster, even though they've had a win. Um, I'm still a little bit... Still lacking, I think, especially in that yeah. creativity. Yeah, it just depends on how wrecked they are from this bug and then travel. But on paper, if it was just, you know, take that out, I would say Ulster. So I'll, I'll still back Ulster, I think. Osprey's Connor. This is a big game, actually, Shanks. The Osprey's Connor yeah. game. Yeah, I think it is. Um, I'll go Osprey's, I think. But they are in a, they have 14 players in the Welsh squad. Um, I think it will test their strength and depth a bit, but they do turn out with a fairly decent strength. There might be some players released as well that are allowed to play. We'll find out in the week, but yeah. at home, at the Libsy.com, I will go the Ospreys. Swansea.com, sorry. Ospreys for me as well. Uh, Bulls versus Sharks. Um, the heavy hitters for the Sharks will be out. I'm sure this will be just carnage. Just <laughs> big men, big collisions. Um, I'm looking forward to watching this one. I'm going to go for the Sharks. Bulls. I'm going to say the Sharks. And last but not least, Cardiff versus Edinburgh on the running order. Thanks, Ben. Who have you got? Cardiff, you going for three in a row, Shanks? Yeah, I am. Um, I'll tell you another thing, boys. Round of the week. I uh, forgot to mention, Willis Alla Hollow gets done with Croc Roll. Um, terrible. Another one. Looked really bad. Knee gone. Um, but yeah, I think I think Cardiff. Um, Stevie. Um, Jared Evans isn't in the squad, so he's more than likely started 10. Lloyd Williams. They won't lose too many players. Thomas Young will still be there. Josh Turnbull will still be there. Um, so they still have our hip, Christian Dacey, a lot of their core, their team. So, Cardiff. Well, what about Edinburgh, John? Are they going to lose many? Um, and then, obviously, the big Bill Matter, who's man of the match at the weekend. We don't know what his future is going to be, but he seems to have had a bit of a rhythm. You need a couple of players like that. Like in Edinburgh, Edinburgh could turn them over. 
Ed McCood, but this is uh, the Scotland Australia games on this weekend, and they can only pick from um, Glasgow Edinburgh players. So Edinburgh and Glasgow are going to be hammered, and this this talk of yeah. it being all Edinburgh backline maybe I've heard rumours. Either way, they're going to lose basically their whole backline. Maybe Buffelli will be there, I suppose. Immelman's injured, I think. Yeah. But I just, yeah, I don't know. I think Edinburgh. I think Edinburgh got a bit more depth than Cardiff, in my opinion. Uh, can I... I uh, go ahead, sorry. Go on. No, no, you, you said can I interrupt, but you already had, so carry on. Okay. Um, you know, <laughs> when you go to, like, on holiday or you go to an Olympic pool and they have, like, a diving area and they've got, like, three boards. So they've got the lower springboard, the middle one, and then the, the top one, which is solid. Yeah. I can dive off the top one, and from the bottom one, I can do a somersault into a dive. That's a better fact, all right? Just... You, you can dive off the top one? Yes. And I can do a somersault into a dive off the bottom one, which I learned in Club La Santa in Lanzarote when I went there on a training camp with Wales pre-World Cup 2003. Okay. Have, you seen, have you seen that one of the uh, <laughs> Marco Vinopolo doing <laughs> off, the, off the dive board? <laughs> have you seen that? No. No. <laughs> he's with away with Sarah yeah. and he lands like a tsunami coming down honestly <laughs> I'm going to look for it now so yeah anyway uh, um, just, we just want video it. evidence of that uh, in the coming weeks Shanks boys cheer for your time as always um, that's everything we've got time for of course you can watch every minute of every game on Premier Sports which is changing to via play on the 1st of November so we'll look forward to that. But uh, we'll catch you next week. Cheers, John. Cheers, Shanks. Cheers.